Hey there, I hope you're having a good day. A new book called Herald of Pinebrook has just come out. It's a free PDF linked down below that breaks down easy ways for new DMs and new players to start playing. And there are a handful of tips in this book that I wanted to share. And so you could hear it from me, somebody who actually agrees with all the things that are in this book. This video specifically is for dungeon masters, but it's totally okay for players to hear because it won't spoil anything about the game. First, have fun. It's okay if everyone disagrees with the rules or agrees with changes to the rules if it means everyone's gonna have more fun at the table. Not everyone will agree, but that's the part of being a dungeon master. You're a referee, you're a moderator. Your job is to find compromise among everybody and hopefully other people at the table can help too. Number two, be supportive. Players in the dungeon master are on the same team, even if the monsters and villains aren't. Dungeon masters are not playing against players. They are challenging characters. The dungeon master wins when players have fun and are able to add their ideas to the adventure, making the game more memorable and interesting for everybody at the table. Use yes and or no but. Allow players to succeed and utilize their ideas as much as possible. They are, in fact, the players of the game. Yes and is a social tool that encourages people's creativity and ideas and allows them to add them to your own and allows you to respond with your own stacking and anding and yesing on top of each other. It's a tool that's not just for D&D, it's for teaching, learning, workplace, relationships. It is a great tool for people to practice and learn, especially in a safe space like Dungeons and Dragons. If you have to say no to a player's idea, offer a suggestion, an alternative choice of actions that can happen instead of that spell. No but is a social skill that, that teaches people to not just shut down ideas. If you have to say no to something, you gotta make sure that you offer a suggestion as a response. Early on in my creative career, I learned that in the writer's room, you never wanna shut down somebody else's idea, even if you know it's not a good idea, unless you have something to offer in its place, whether it's worse or better. Otherwise, you're teaching players and sometimes kids that their idea is not good and they need to stop it, sit down, be quiet, pay attention. And then they will stop wanting to share their ideas because they're told no too often. It's a very simple psychological effect. Use your imagination as a dungeon master. D&D and the fantasy world and even the rules, the core rules to the game are just a foundation to unlock creativity. Maybe you don't wanna take place in the same world or the same realms that the game takes place. Maybe it doesn't have to be fantasy. Maybe it can be modern, World War II era, sci-fi. Change and make up anything you need using the fundamental rules. If it means leading to having a more fun game in the style that the table wants as a collective, maybe even add your own details to things like the smell and the sounds of monsters, the, the habitats, the diets of monsters, maybe the, the types of vegetation in the world so players can make potions or uh, poisons. It's up to you and Honestly, you can make anything you want as long as we all agree to what we're doing. Number four, NPCs are your voice. While players often focus on what they're going to do, you can use NPCs, non-player characters, to communicate lore, secrets, and information to your players through the game, through the characters, whether it is actually speaking to the characters or two NPCs having a conversation and the players overhear them. Maybe they read a letter made by an NPC. Maybe they steal something from the NPC that gives them the information they need. NPCs are a great tool and often the key way for dungeon masters to communicate in-game adventure plot information. Five, allow alternatives. Often as players, we imagine this great thing happening and we roll to see if it happens. Dungeon masters can easily imagine how to solve the challenge, how to solve the puzzle, how to solve the problem. And they become unflexible. They become rigid and they can't adapt to the player's creativity because there's this one way to solve it. Characters can use their weapons, their spells, their abilities, their backstory, their class, their ancestry and race, all as tools and ways to solve your puzzle and to solve your obstacles. On top of that, you have the real world human brains of your players that are not you with your perspective, your biases and your experience. And therefore they can come up with different ways to solve your obstacle. It's four, if you have four players, it's four V one. 
<laughs> Rather than fighting the monster, maybe they want to negotiate and talk with it. Maybe they want to trick. Maybe they want to avoid fighting. Maybe they want to sneak off. It's important for the dungeon master to have a solution to the situation, the encounter, the obstacle that they present to the players. But that solution isn't the way the players have to solve the problem. In fact, it's probably most of the time not the way they're going to solve it. Making it not the result that you should look for, but a tool for you to help understand the obstacle itself that you're putting in front of them. Even if there's a magical puzzle or passphrase that locks the door and the players can't get through, maybe there's a window, maybe they can dig underneath, maybe they can blow a hole in the wall. There are different ways and different skills listed on the character sheets that you should be open to allowing the players to creatively solve your problems, puzzles, and obstacles. So use yes and and no but to allow your players to solve things and surprise and entertain you. Six. Seven, eight, don't know how many numbers there are. Nine, listen to your players. Encourage your players to speak up, whether in public or in private, especially when something's uncomfortable around the table. A game night, this is a social gathering. It's super basic and common. It's just like hanging out with friends. If something's uncomfortable, you definitely want somebody who's kind of the host of the party to talk to about it. Your job is to respond appropriately and respectfully. For instance, for instance, let's say we're playing the game and something uncomfortable or upsetting or triggering happens at the game. We wanna be able to quickly move past the topic and wrap up the scene and move on to the next thing versus lingering on this trigger, whatever it is, or tiptoeing around eggshells throughout it. Be a good friend, be a good person, be respectful and recognize like, oh, yeah, and then this happens, this happens, and, and we move on. It's as simple as that. Just because you check in with your players and know what their phobias are, doesn't give you permission to use those phobias or triggers. And say that, well, you've checked in with your players. You let them know that it's coming. They can prepare themselves. If you had a phobia or a trigger or something that makes you uncomfortable, if I as a dungeon master told you, just heads up, that's going to happen. You don't want it to happen. <laughs> cool, dude, but I can we just like make it something else? It's made up. Look at my girlfriend, Allie, for example. I am talking about you because you have a phobia of spiders. I had to get rid of all my spider minis. I'm not allowed to have spiders in my game. I avoid them as much as possible in the background. Like, I don't want to say, oh, a spider is over there or a spider comes out of this set of undead armor or whatever. Sum it up as a bug. If it's just that little texture of a detail, if I want cobwebs and spider webs everywhere to get everything all nasty looking. It can't be a spider web. It's gotta be something else. I gotta figure that out because I need to respect my players. And a lot of these things can be handled upfront before you start your adventure. Have a session zero. We call it a session zero because it's kind of the pre-game of the adventure where everyone gets together. We often roll our dice and make our characters. And often in session zero, we set up expectations. We talk about the things that we don't want to see in the game. Maybe, maybe someone doesn't want to see children in danger. Maybe someone doesn't want to see animals being abused. Maybe someone who has a poor experience with violence actually wants to avoid as much combat as possible. Having everyone at the table hear these things allows them to respect each other and honor each other's request as friends. And as the dungeon master, these limitations, these limitations aren't there to stop you from creating a cool game. These limitations, like any limitation, is meant to drive creativity. With a good session zero, respect for your players, and knowing that you're not the owner of the world that you're building and running, that it is a playhouse for your players to paint, break, and change as they go on. You could run a game that lasts decades. You could have friend you could create friendship bonds that last a lifetime. I hope this helps you become a better dungeon master or excites you to become one in the first place. Hope you have fun playing Dungeons and Dragons. Hit the like button and please consider watching more of my videos. I'll see you next time. Listening to where we play with nothing but chance, chance, and more chance.
Sana Dynal Demetrian Station.